Somebody calling right now, Brian? All right, you're on what's the Bible say? Um, yes, I wanted to ask a question. I just now tuned in. Okay. Um, able, I did hear something about the baptism and that. Um, what if you got saved in a church, say, six, seven years ago, but your preacher never did baptize you at well, that time? And Well, you know what, ma'am? The, the only thing I can tell you is what the Bible says. You cannot get saved without being baptized. Because the Bible says in Mark 16, 16, for instance, this is the last thing that Jesus told his disciples when he sent them out to preach the gospel. He said, he that believeth, here it is, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, this is what they taught in the New Testament, and you're telling me that your preacher is somehow or other found a way to save you, and, and now you're thinking about being baptized later. So you weren't saved in the first place according to the Bible now. Because the point at which God says now, this is, this is his own statement, not Johnny. This is the first sermon that was ever preached after he sent them out. Peter told them in Acts 2.38 to repent, and I'm assuming that's what you did. As a result of believing that Jesus is the Son of God, you were willing to repent. You were sorry for your sins. Is that correct? All right. Peter said repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the removal or the remission of your sins. That's what that word means. So see, you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and you were sorry, but you didn't go through with what Jesus said to do. So you're not saved. And the reason why the preachers don't go ahead and preach this full truth, ma'am, is if you really think about it, they know that many individuals are going to halt right here. I don't know I don't know what the situation was. Let me ask you, let's just see if, how you were. Some people have a really good heart. Some people don't. Would you have been baptized if he would have showed you this? On that time frame that you're telling about that, that he said you were saved? Yes, I didn't know this. That's why I'm asking. So you mean to tell me tonight, ma'am, that your heart was such that if he had gone on and shown you this, that you would have obeyed the Lord? Yes. I'm very, I am very worried. I'm worried for you. But you have a good heart, and the Lord spared you tonight. And you've come face to face with this information. I'm very worried about the preacher who rejected the opportunity, refused you the opportunity to hear the full gospel of Jesus Christ. And there are a bunch of them out there. And, and you know what, ma'am? There are a lot of people that are not like you. Had they heard this part, they would have turned and scoffed. Just like in Jesus' day, there were many people that wouldn't be baptized by John because they just didn't believe that what John was preaching about the baptism had anything to do with anything, so they just rejected it. Uh -huh. And a lot of the preachers know that that's what's going to happen. Do you know, ma'am, there's a sermon out there. Do you know who Charles Stanley is? No. Charles Stanley is one of the mo well, most well-known Baptist preachers around. He has a sermon on the Internet where he actually has a, he's got a church where he's got about a thousand or more people in there, and he had a list of all the names of the people in his church who would not be baptized. And on one of his sermons on live uh, television and on the Internet, he actually got that list out and, and showed it to the whole congregation. Here's people who won't be baptized. See, there are a lot of people that just won't do this. They won't allow themselves to be put in the water. It kind of is foolishness to them. But you're telling us tonight, had the preacher gone ahead and told you what Peter told individuals, you would have done it. Yes. Well, ma'am. Uh, I was in a small, small church at the time, and it was in the wintertime. And we really didn't have anywhere to get baptized. And I kind of wanted to do it in the water, like in the creek area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just some things kind of went on in the church, and a whole lot of the elders left, and the church no longer exists now. Mm -hmm. But I still feel in my heart that I was saved that, that day because it was the best feeling I've ever had in my entire life. I mean, I feel like I could just fly around the church. I just just my heart was just felt so much love and peace and everything off my shoulders but I haven't been baptized and that's why I wanted to call to find out you know if I am or not saved. Well can I give you an illustration here that might help you in regard to this feeling uh, I don't know if you ever remember reading this or not but I, I think that you would probably affirm that in the Bible the Jews were some individuals who were generally accepted as God's people. Would you say that? Yes. They are. They were very determinate people. When Paul talks about them, look what he says in Romans chapter one, uh, ten, verse two: "For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge." 
for they being ignorant of God's righteousness have gone about to establish their own righteousness. Now ma'am, if Paul says this about basically the whole Jewish nation in his day, that they're bubbling over, that's what that word zeal, if you break it down in the Greek, it actually means to bubble over. They are bubbling over with energy and excitement for God. But look at this, not according to knowledge. And since they don't have knowledge, they're actually ignorant of God's real plan and they're going about to establish their own plan. Ma'am, tonight, the preacher who taught you is involved in establishing his own plan for righteousness because he is rejecting the plan that we're reading about in the Bible. And I believe that he's probably rejecting the place that you would have ended up. In the New Testament, if they believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and they repented of their sins and were baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their, their sins, they were then placed in the church of Christ. Did you end up when you were saved in the church of Christ or did you say, end up in some church that's not in Jesus' book of righteousness? I'll see, we, the, uh, the church was just about the Bible. There was no, no Baptist or Methodist or any of that. All right. Now, you mentioned elders a moment ago. I mean, they had to have some kind of, they had to be willing to, to designate themselves in some fashion. In other words, uh, they had to give glory to somebody. When somebody asked you, well, ma'am, what are you? What would, or, or somebody in that church, what would they say? If they said, well, what are y'all? What would they say? Christians. Christians. And they said, well, well, what church are you in? What would they say? The name of the church. What is it? it? It's no longer in existence. What was it? I don't want to say. Okay. Now, you know what? You, the preacher is not a preacher anymore, to, to my knowledge. All right. Well, I can tell you this, ma'am. I know tonight, had it been the church that you read about in the Bible, you would say, because you'd have no reason to pull back in saying the church that Jesus has recorded. Is that not true? I guess you're right. Okay. And so, see, that's my point. If you ended up in a church that's not the church you read here, then you may have been, you know, fired up and bubbling over with zeal, but so were the Jews. But because they hadn't obeyed the truth, they were establishing their form of religion, and it wasn't suitable to God. And as a result of that, that's why Jesus and Paul were saying that they're going to be rejected because they won't receive. Now, tonight, you've demonstrated that you would have been baptized had you known this scripture exists. And you know what, ma'am, tonight, I think that we can probably test you to see, um, you know, how zealous you are about this. Now you see it. What's hindering you to be baptized now? Nothing. So you're saying that you realize that you have not fully completed what Jesus said for you to do in order to be saved? Yes, sir. So, can I help you tonight? You, were, you say that, that you would have been baptized if you had seen the truth back then. You're seeing the truth tonight. Is there anything that's going to hinder you? Do you really believe that if you were to die tonight without having your sins removed that you'd be in a safe condition if you were to meet the Lord? In, in my heart of hearts, yes, I do believe that because, like I said before you read this, that I, I've always felt that I was saved. And I've always, you know, I pray every night and I ask God to forgive me for all my sins every night. And I'm in a new church now that I just started. But I have not asked the preacher this question because you were talking about baptism, so that's why I called you. And, um, so let me ask you this. What if you ask him, will he baptize you the way that they baptize in the New Testament for the remission of your sins? And he tells you no. I don't, I'm not, I don't understand. Well, at some point, I assume that you're planning on being baptized. Yes. And are you going to be baptized for the Bible reason? For, there it is, for the remission of sins. Or are you going to be baptized just to show people that you love Jesus. See, that's what most people try to get you to be baptized, an outward sign of something that's already taken place. Now, you've seen tonight that the New Testament says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's Mark chapter 16, verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Your preacher taught you 
who that believeth and is saved and is baptized later will go to heaven. But Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You actually haven't done what Jesus said, but you still think that you're saved. But my question is, if you were to ask a preacher, would he baptize you for the reason that Paul, Peter baptized the individuals on the day of Pentecost, and he tells you no, what will you do? I would find another church. Well, ma'am, you might as well start looking. There's not a preacher in this town that will baptize you for the remission of your sins, except for the church of Christ. Now, that's why I'm, I'm kind of searching out. I want to find a church that does Bible study because I need to learn more about the Bible. And that's the main reason I called you tonight, just to see. Well, do you know, ma'am, that I do uh, Bible studies on a regular basis where we just sit down and we take the time, whatever the person, you know, where you, wherever you are at your learning um, uh, ability, you know, in other words, if you've got a whole lot of Bible knowledge and you want to go fast, or if you basically say, I, you know what, I want to look at this and really examine things, we take you at whatever pace you want to go, and we basically look at all the information, all the questions that, that you have, and we show you what the Bible says. And number two, this is something that no one else will do for you. I will let any preacher in this whole area that you choose, that you might say, well, I think so-and-so over here might have a different take on that. I'd like for him to come to Bible study. I'm willing to let any preacher in the area come to the Bible study with us. But I'll tell you this, any preacher that you choose will not do the same thing. They will not let me come into the, into the Bible study because they cannot maintain what they're saying to you from the Bible. Now, if you had a doctor that said you had cancer and you had another doctor that said you didn't, and the doctor who said you didn't was willing to meet with the one that said you did, and you went and told him. A doctor over here says, I don't have cancer. Would you meet with him? And he said no. What would you think? That's something right. All right. If you can't get the preacher that you're associated with to meet with you and me and defend what he's teaching you, ma'am, something's wrong with what he's teaching you. I'll meet with anybody, anywhere, anytime, and I'll meet with two or three of them at the same time. Because what I'm saying is based on the Bible, and it'll stand. And what they're saying is basically denominationalism, and it's not biblical, and they're replacing salvation. This is your salvation here. And so uh, I'm going to give you my phone number just in case. Uh, I want you to get in touch with me if you uh, have a desire to, 276-806-2150. Can I ask you one other yes, question? Yes, yes. Um, what you're saying, all right, say you, say you were to go to church Sunday and you were saved. You're supposed to be baptized the same day. Well, see, ma'am, you, you, I don't think you even realize what you're actually doing tonight. Well, you, now, what I'm asking I, is... I did, I heard uh, you. But see, you're asking it right backwards. You said, could I go and to church and I'm already saved and then be baptized? I cannot agree with that when Jesus says you can't be saved without being baptized. You see, you've got, can you read what I have on the screen? That are, no, are you saying that you have to get baptized before you're saved? No, I'm not saying anything. The Bible says. Right, I'm reading, now let's watch this. Belief plus baptism equals salvation. That's what this verse says. Believe and is baptized shall be saved. Your preacher told you believe and be saved and then be baptized. You cannot find that in the New Testament. Here is the prescription. Here's the order. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. The order that you were taught, he that believeth and is saved and then be baptized. And you're still saying it. You ask me, can I come to church? I'm already saved and then be baptized. The answer is no. You can do it if you want to, but you can't do it and follow Jesus. See, this is what I was taught when I went to a Baptist church when I was growing up. I know. And so it was just all wrong. You know what? There's two things here. Tonight you're seeing that you were taught wrong about your salvation. And number two, guess what? There's no Baptist church in this Bible. That ought to be a, a, a warning right here. I know. That's why. I, well, see, that's what I'm saying. That's when I was a child and I was, you know, I was made to go there. So, But as I've gotten older, I know that there's... Nothing about Baptist, Methodist, Catholics, and all that stuff there. So 
I know that any of that's not true, so I, that's why I want to go to a church that just teaches strictly the Bible. And you need to make sure of this, too. I'm, I've got this on the screen, Romans 16, 16. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. You want to make sure that you go to a church that's willing to wear, I'm talking about out front, not be ashamed of, be designated by the Lord's name. Christians in the church of Christ, and we teach exactly what Jesus taught. Now, ma'am, I've given you enough tonight, and you've demonstrated to our community that you can see this, and you've really helped our broadcast, and I think that, that uh, you know, we can help you, can, we can help you and uh, you have my phone number. It's and, 806, is one minute. Yes. 276, one minute, hold on. 276, 806, what? 2150. 2150. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you for calling. I'm, I'm going to go on and catch this last part. You call me after the show if I can help you. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, now, folks, tonight I have...